Hey guys, Brent here. In this tip I'm going to show you how I went from an image like this straight off the camera to this. All the settings are used in Lightroom to go from this to this. Amazing. Before I jump into that, I just want to remind you that this is your last chance to grab this amazing course, Lightroom Essentials for Landscape Photographers by Johnny Spencer. Everything I've learned in this tutorial, I've learned from this course. So here's the special URL that Johnny made for me, johnnyspencer.com forward slash LRE dash BMP for Brent Mail Photography. Awesome. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so what did I do to go from this image, which is straight off the camera, to this one? All right, so let me show you. So what I do basically is I go down the the side over here. I'm in the develop module of Lightroom. Last time I actually went through how I picked my images really quickly. So if you want to check out that tutorial, go ahead. But here I'm in the develop module and what I do is I go from the top to the bottom. So the first thing I did was make sure my white balance is right. So I started at the cloudy white balance setting and then from there I actually changed things a little bit. So I thought, yep, that's pretty close. I'm just going to go a little bit cooler on the clouds. So I'm going to go to about there, 5780 on the color temperature. Then I run down all the basic panel stuff. So exposure, I took the exposure down by a stop, I up, up the contrast to plus nine. And then I used the, the highlights and shadows. So basically the highlights, all you want to really do is if you click on that little triangle up there, and you go up or down, you can probably see where it starts. Over here it starts actually uh, blowing out so there's too many, there's, there's no information, it's pure white. So what I do is you just bring the highlights down just to where you've, you, just below where it's blowing out, so about over there probably. And then the shadows, what I want to do with the shadows is I'll click on the little left triangle and you'll see down here the blues that's where it's totally black I do like a, a little bit of black but what I did was I brought the shadows up to 29 so where it was about over here there's quite a lot of shadows and no detail so I brought it up to um, about 29 over there great so now with the I'll just turn that off for now so with the whites that's the the highlight part what you want to do is similar to what you did with the highlights is you're just setting the white point and you're going to set the black point. So with the whites you can hold down alt key on a PC and you can um, and you can move it down to where it starts. You'll see over there the reds that's where it's blowing out and then I'm going to move it left to where I've got where the reds just go away. That's about it. There we go. And the same thing with the blacks. If you hold down the alt key and you you move it up or down, you can probably see where the blacks are totally black. And if I move it way down here, you'll see I've got a lot of blacks in the image. And what I wanted to do was get it to a point where I just got a, a little bit of black. So I'm going to keep a little bit of black in there because I want those rocks, the shadows, to be totally black. And this is up to your own choice, really. So now when you get to the clarity, the clarity slider, I always move up a little bit, not too much. Johnny suggests, you know, around 10 or 15. Vibrance, I'll leave at zero because vibrance works mainly on skin tones. And this is a landscape image. And then saturation between 10 and 15. You don't want to oversaturate things, otherwise this doesn't look right. Look at that, just doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to move it back down to, you know, between 10 and 15 or so. Great, so then I run down to the next one, my, my tone curve, I didn't really use that. I think this time I used it just a little bit. I just brought the highlights down a little bit. Nothing major there. Uh, hue saturation, luminance. So what I do here is in the luminance section, I bring down the, the brightness of the colors. So I brought down the reds and the orange and the yellow just a little bit in the sky just to bring it down a little bit more because that was the brightest part of the image. Under the details section over here, what I've done here and what Johnny suggests we do 
is is quite interesting. So what he starts with is the noise reduction. So you actually zoom into a section where there may be a little bit of noise. So I might zoom into the rock over there, the shadows on the rock. And um, and then you up the noise, starting about 10 or 20, the noise reduction. And right now, because I photographed this at uh, ISO 100, there's not too much noise in this image. So I'll leave all those uh, sliders at the defaults. But then you jump to the sharpening slider. So if your noise reduction is at around 10, start your sharpening at about 90. So basically, the sharpening amount plus the luminance noise reduction amount should equal 100. That's a good place to start. So if my noise is at 20, I'll start my sharpening at about 80. So what Johnny talks about in the masking is really interesting. So basically you can sharpen an area of the image and mask the rest so you don't sharpen the rest. So for instance, I really want these rocks to be sharpened on the edges over here, but I don't necessarily want the sky and this water to be sharpened. So what you do is on the mask section over here, you click on that, you hold down the Alt key, and you can actually see if you move it to the left or to the right, you can mask out certain areas of your image. So for instance, in this image, the black areas are not going to be sharpened and the white areas are going to be sharpened. So I want to move it to the right a little bit. So I want to mask out most of it, but I really want the rocks to be sharpened still. So right now, the edges of the rocks over here, whoops, <laughs> there we go. So right now, the edges of the rocks are sharpened, but the the sky and the water isn't sharpened. So that's a great little tip when you are using the sharpening tool, use the masking area of it. All right, so I've got the got that done. Now I go to the lens correction uh, little section and I enable the profile correction. So what that does is it warps the image and it, uh, it puts it back to where it should be because your lens actually warps that image when you photograph it. So there we go. And I can actually turn this on and off over here and you'll see the difference between when I don't have the lens correction on and then when I have it on. Much better. And I also click remove chromatic aberration. And then the effects panel down here, all I do is I just add a little bit of vignetting. So I'll turn that on and off just so you can see on the outside of the image down here, the top, bottom, uh, the edges, I'm adding a little vignetting so it looks like there's a light fall off from a natural lens. All right, so that's basically everything down here that I've done, but now I'll go into a little bit more advanced area. So let's run up to the crop overlay. I'll get rid of the effects panel there. So what I've done over here is I've actually cropped this image to, I wanted the horizon to be straight. And the best way to do this, and this is something new that I've learned from Johnny's course, is to get the uh, the straightening tool. So you click on that little tool, and then you click on the horizon and you drag it so that your horizon is exactly straight. And then you let it go. And what it does now is it actually straightens your image so that the horizon is dead flat. How cool is that? All right, so I dragged it in a little bit to, from the side because I've got the, the filters on my, my lens and I've got a little bit of black up there. So, so that's the crop tool, really easy to get your horizon straight. And then what I used over here for the spot removal tool is I actually used it on the edges over here where I've got uh, the filter holder and the filter on my lens is actually uh, making the edges totally black. So I'll, I'll turn that on and off and just so you can see what happens. There we go. So that's before you can see the black over there on the edges and I'll turn it on. So what I've done is I've actually cloned. I've used the spot removal tool to actually clone in a little bit of the sky and the clouds and the edges over there and I'll probably I mean it's an okay job it's not brilliant but the rest I'll do in Photoshop I'll make it look a lot better then what I used was the the gradient tool so this is really interesting and I learned this from Johnny too is the gradient tool I'll turn it on and off here and you can probably see right at the top here 
you see how it's gone a lot lighter without the gradient tool so that's straight off the camera and when I use the gradient tool what I'm doing is I'm darkening the top of the sky a little bit and I'm adding some color so I'll turn it on then so that's what I've done I've actually changed the gradient temperature the color and I've changed the exposure a little bit so I've got it going from darker at the top to lighter at the bottom. I've also done it at the bottom here a little bit so I've actually darkened the bottom of the image so if I turn that off you'll see it's gone a little bit lighter and now when I turn it on it's gone a little bit darker. And for the last thing that I used the advanced stuff that Johnny taught in his in his uh, amazing course is the radial filter. So what the radial filter does is I'm just adding a little bit of light extra light and clarity to the rocks over here and to the rocks over here so um, I want the rocks to be you know show that rough edge feel and I want to add a little bit of light to that area so let me turn that off so you'll see there there's no light there and there's no light over there and then when I turn it on it lightens that area up a little bit turn it off and turn it on. That's probably the easiest way to see it. So what I've done with the with this is I've actually got a radial area over here and I've upped the exposure by a third of a stop, 0.37 and I've given it more sharpness and more clarity. And I've done the same to this little section over here too. So those are some of the new things that I've learned when editing or post-processing my landscape images. And I learned them all from Johnny's course and I highly recommend you guys jump in there while it's still on special. It's last chance. It's not going to be up there for much longer. You can have a huge savings on Johnny's course. So jump in there right now and go buy it before it's gone. Uh, so let's go back to how this image looked before. And the best way to do that is to, I'll make it a full screen for you. I'll turn the lights out for you. That's the, the L key. Okay, lights out. Whoops, I'll get rid of that panel. And then what I can do here is I can show you the before. There's the before picture. And here's the after picture. Quite an amazing difference what comes straight off the camera and what you can actually do in Lightroom using the techniques that Johnny's taught me from his course. Anyway, what do you guys think? of this edit. Do you like what I've done here? Please leave me comments below this video. This is Brent. Have a great day.